Baby, I'm just calling to say goodnight. I love you. Pasi, the most beautiful girl I've ever met. You didn't have to be a big college football fan to hop on the Manti Teo bandwagon this year. Was Teo the victim or the perpetrator of this hoax? But it turns out we were all duped by what turned out to be a fictitious story. This is one of the most bizarre stories in football history. It's a wild tale full of lies, twists, and pure drama surrounding a once extremely popular and incredibly talented player. So let's not waste any time and get right down to it. In high school, Manti Teo was considered the top linebacker in the 2009 class. After a heavy recruiting battle, Teo ended up committing to Notre Dame, where he made an immediate impact. He was named a freshman All-American and was looking like the future of fighting Irish football. After the final game of his freshman year, Teo exchanged glances with a Stanford student, Lene Kakua. And those glances quickly turned into exchange phone numbers. For the next two years or so, Teo would remain friends with Kakua, and as his play on the field developed, so did their relationship. By the end of his junior year, Teo had established himself as one of the best players in the country, and it was time to consider going pro. His family was told that staying another year at Notre Dame would cost Manti $4 million. Even then, he chose to stay another year because of the connection he felt with the school. Speaking of connections, in early 2012, Teo and Kakua had fallen in love. Every night, they would fall asleep on the phone together, but around this time, Kakua suffered injuries in a car crash that left her on the brink of death. While she's in the hospital, doctors discover she has leukemia. Through the treatment, the phone calls would continue, with Teo frequently waking up to the sound of Kakua's breathing in the morning. When she was at her lowest points, her family told Teo her breathing rate would increase at the sound of his voice. Even as she battled in and out of a coma, she always wanted Teo to keep playing football no matter what. Now there's varying reports of what I'm going to talk about next, but we're going to go with Sports Illustrated. On September 12th, Teo received a call from his parents saying his grandmother had passed away. Just six hours later, he gets a call from Kakua's brother, who told him Kakua had died as well. Because of his girlfriend's wishes, Teo still played in the upcoming game against 10th ranked Michigan State. In support of him, Notre Dame fans got together and collectively wore thousands of Hawaiian lays. This would be a turning point for the Notre Dame community. Everyone was aboard Team Teo as he recovered from such a tragic situation. The day of Kakua's funeral, Teo had two interceptions as Notre Dame beat Michigan to stay undefeated. Coach Brian Kelly awarded the game ball to Kakua. Teo was now the most recognized man on campus, and everyone knew Kakua's story as well. Football-wise, he was no longer just the best player on an undefeated team. He was being considered as the best player in the country. It takes a special player, and let's be honest, a special story helps as well, for a defensive player to be a Heisman candidate. Teo had both going for him. With the faithful fighting Irish fans so attached to him and his heartbreak, it was only a matter of time before websites were created and hashtags were trending. In October, Teo was featured as the cover athlete for Sports Illustrated. And like I said, there wasn't just an overwhelming amount of support for Teo, but Kakua as well. Fundraising campaigns began in support of leukemia research. I guess if there's anything good to come from this situation, then that would certainly be it. As Notre Dame kept winning and rising in the polls, Teo and Kakua's story became bigger and bigger. It was no longer just a sports story. Some of the biggest media outlets in the nation ran with it. And it's really no wonder why. You had the best player on one of the most prestigious college football programs, who just so happened to go undefeated and reach the national championship. 
So on the day of the championship, CBS retold the story, showing Kakua's picture and quote telling Teo to continue playing. Meanwhile, a woman in California was in utter shock knowing that her face had become the icon for America's heartbreak story of the year. In January of 2013, Deadspin released a bombshell. There was never any death record of Lene Kakua. There was no obituary. There was no evidence of a severe car crash involving a Lene Kakua. The Stanford Registrar's Office had no record that a Lene Kakua had ever been enrolled. The only indication that a Lene Kakua even existed was based off a few social media accounts. The photographs of the girl on those accounts? Well, she had never met Manti Teo. And Manti Teo had never met Kakua at Stanford his freshman year in 2009. He lied about that. He did, however, meet Renaya Tuiasasopo, a man posing as Kakua's cousin after a game versus USC his senior year. And weirdly enough, Tuiasasopo was also the man behind the Kakua hoax. He was the one speaking on the phone every night. He wanted to come clean to Teo in person, but with Teo's family there, he just couldn't do it. If we rewind a bit and go back to December, Teo received a call from his dead girlfriend. With the same exact voice, she said she faked her own death to elude drug dealers. Teo asked for photo evidence and eventually realized he was in the middle of a scam. A hoax that the country had unknowingly become infatuated with. Teo had no choice but to tell his family and eventually Notre Dame coaches. It was kept a secret until Deadspin broke the news in January. And just weeks prior, the woman in California, Diane O'Mara, a former high school classmate of Tuiasa Sopo, was told she had become the face of the hoax. At this point, we had Teo doing an interview with Katie Kirk saying he had no involvement in what he called a sick joke. Meanwhile, Tuiasa Sopo told Dr. Phil that he fell deeply in love with Teo. He said as a singer, he could manipulate his voice to sound like a female. And O'Mara was on the Today Show saying this was just a twisted scenario. All of this was happening while Teo was supposed to be preparing for the scouting combine as a projected first round pick. If you're wondering, Deadspin points to a tweet in October of 2011 as the first moment they made contact. From there, they exchanged messages and turned those messages into phone calls. Tuiasa Sopo said he created the character as a way to escape from real life. Then it ultimately became his life. Once the whole thing came crashing down, all three affected parties were obviously ready to move on as fast as humanly possible. In the 2013 NFL Draft, Teo fell to the second round. The Chargers selected him and he could once again refocus on his dream to be the next Junior Seau. After an injury at the beginning of the year, Teo started 13 straight games. Over the next few seasons, he became a primary part of the Chargers' defense. Unfortunately, he was an easy trash talk target as opponents enjoyed using the imaginary girlfriend jokes quite a bit. And then there was that time where the Raiders fans paid their respects to the late, fake Lene. In 2016, Teo was named a captain, but that would be his final year in San Diego. As a free agent, he signed a two-year deal with the Saints, and as part of a couple of stacked Saints teams, he didn't end up playing nearly as much. This last season, he spent the year on the Bears practice squad, although he did play in their one playoff game. Yes, that was the game on Nickelodeon, and yes, the fake girlfriend memes were brought back. Currently, Teo has yet to sign anywhere for the 2021 season. I can tell you this, he got married in the past year to a very real wife, and the face of his old fake girlfriend, Diane O'Mara, seems to have disappeared off the face of the internet. Meanwhile, Renaya Tuiasasopo has pretty much vanished as well. He stopped doing interviews sometime in 2013, but he's apparently going to be in a planned Netflix documentary along with Teo. It sounds like those two will have creative input and are possibly being paid, so hopefully answers to the difficult questions aren't avoided. 
Hope everyone enjoyed this video. I've wanted to retell this wild story for a while. As always, feel free to drop video suggestions you want to see in the comments below. Tay, 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 oh, I don't like your girlfriend. No way, no way.